Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to learn how to tame a hydrogen vent. Hydrogen vents can be particularly nasty because the hydrogen that comes out is at 500 degrees. That's a lot of heat. But the great thing about this beast is there's a lot of power potential behind it. Not only are you getting hydrogen, which is the cleanest power source when you run it through the hydrogen generator, because when you use the hydrogen, it doesn't output anything else. It's just clean energy. You don't have to worry about the carbon dioxide or natural gas, polluted water, nothing. Okay, so there is a little bit of heat to contend with, but when you're generating 800 watts, that's easily done. You compare this to a petroleum generator, yeah, it produces 2,000 watts, but it also produces 500 grams of carbon dioxide and 750 grams of polluted water. Now, there are situations where this is beneficial because all that water it took to put into the oil wells, to refine the petroleum, well, you're going to get some of it back here. And the same thing with the natural gas generator. It produces polluted water and carbon dioxide. But today, today is all about clean energy. Now, the first thing you do when designing a new system is think about what kind of effects the vent is going to have and how you're going to combat them. Well, hydrogen coming out at 500C, that one seems pretty obvious. We need some way to absorb that heat, which is normally what we do with a steam turbine and thermo aqua tuner. But we also know that we can't just have the hydrogen vent sitting inside of a steam bath because, well, we want hydrogen. We don't want steam and we definitely don't want to mix all those gases because that's just a headache. So this is the basic frame for our setup. Temporarily, we're going to put in a liquid lock. We're not going to need the liquid lock forever. We just need it to make sure that we can vacuum this place out. And once we're done vacuuming it up, and installing everything, well, then we can just close this area up and then we can be done. Now this liquid lock is not a lot of liquid, but we really don't need a lot of liquid for our use case. Remember, this is only for temporary use. If it was for permanent use, well, we would do something like this and we'd fill these areas up because after dupes running through here for so long and things being dropped, you never know and you don't want to accidentally break that liquid lock. But in this case, this works just fine because the oil is sitting here, the environment on this side, can't get to the environment on this side. And that's because in Ani, gases and liquids can't share the same tile. Next, we need to start vacuuming the area out. And in this case, we're gonna use the same gas pump and gas pipes to vacuum out the area as we will getting the hydrogen out of the area. Temporarily, we're just gonna put a high pressure gas vent on the top of the whole system. That way we can vacuum this place out. It's got nothing but polluted oxygen in it anyways. And quite frankly, the entire area is polluted oxygen, so it does not matter. Even before you've analyzed a vent, you can see whether or not it's active or dormant. And in this case, the hydrogen vent is dormant and that's what we want because we want to be able to get in here to analyze it, but we're definitely not going to want to ruin our vacuum too soon. We have a system to set up and we need to make sure that we get it set up before the hydrogen vent is active. So because we know it's dormant, we can actually dig the rest of this out, clean up this mess, and analyze the vent. So we finished analyzing the hydrogen vent, and since the new patch came out a couple days ago, we're back to getting data banks for analyzing. 11 data banks for analyzing the hydrogen vent. Very cool. The other set of good news is we actually have 54 cycles before this thing turns back on. Well, it's actually kind of a double-edged sword because it means we have 54 cycles to get everything built and running. The bad news being it's going to be 54 cycles before I can show it off. Now that we've finished analyzing the hydrogen vent, though, we can figure out exactly how much hydrogen we're going to get from it. So first, we'll take the 260 seconds, divide it by the 486, and we'll get... 0.5349 so we'll just average it and say 53.5 percent and then we take an active period of 87.4 cycles and we divide that by 154.7 cycles and we get 0.5649 so we'll round that to 56 and a half percent and when we multiply those figures together we get a total of 30.2 percent that's 30.2% of the time, this hydrogen vent will actually be erupting and producing hydrogen. We can multiply that by the 325.8 grams, and we get a grand total of 98.48, so we can round it up to 
five grams per second indefinitely. And the reason we care about that figure is because we want to see what we're going to be able to do on the hydrogen generators. Now, a hydrogen generator takes 100 grams per second, which I know you're saying, well, Echo, that's actually a little bit more than we're actually producing per second. But remember, our power generators don't actually run 100% of the time. And that's because we put them on smart batteries. So I'm going to estimate the fact that we also have a little bit of a hydrogen coming off of our oxygen center that we might be able to fully support three hydrogen generators so in anticipation we're gonna throw down three right here put our beautiful smart battery here connect them to our main power spine and then finish up with the automation now the difficult part is going to be able to get the hydrogen all the way up to our power generation area well not difficult per se just rather expensive we're going to want to use insulated gas pipes because we don't want a lot of the extra hydrogen heat to impact the environment around them so we're going to use granite but take a note that we have 575 tons of granite right now before we make this run and here we go and now we have 501 tons so that one gas pipe run just cost us 75 tons of granite. Now when this hydrogen vent starts spitting out hydrogen at 500C, it's gonna be a shock to our system. Even though we built this gas pump out of steel, it still has an overheat temperature of 275. This is the piece of equipment we're most worried about. Now we're gonna try to offset that with some temperature shift plates. In my case, we're using diamond because this map just happens to have a lot of diamond, but you can use a bunch of different materials. The key being that we want the temperature shift plates to absorb all that heat and not break our gas pump. Now, once the whole system stabilizes, the temperature shift plates will then actually help transfer the heat around evenly to make sure the system is as efficient as possible. We're down to micrograms of polluted oxygen in here, so it should turn into a vacuum momentarily. Now, some of you may have noticed that we put the temperature shift plates all the way up to the tiles. Normally, you do not do this because this temperature shift plate will now transfer heat with the insulated tile. And you normally don't want that because then the heat will then transfer with this environment. In our case, we're actually going to be double layering the insulated tile around here. Now, you don't need to double layer the neutronium area because neutronium has a thermal conductivity of zero. No temperature can get from here to over here. But all the other little areas, we're definitely going to double insulate it in. Well, almost. Remember, our steam turbines can't actually be two layers up. They have to be on through a single layer of tile. So this will be the only area that is not double insulated. But to be quite honest, the only place that we're really concerned about is the area that is the source of the 500C hydrogen. Now that that area is vacuumed out, we can actually get rid of this high pressure gas vent and connect up to our main line. You may have noticed in the background, we put an Atmo sensor in. The reason why we put an Atmo sensor in, just in case we want to control how much hydrogen is left in this area. We don't necessarily want to completely vacuum it out because we want there to be an environment in here. So we're going to say send a green signal as long as the ambient pressure in the room is above 500 grams. So that means there'll always be at least 500 grams of pressure inside this room. But why is that? It's because we're actually going to absorb a lot of that heat. We're not necessarily trying to cool the hydrogen vent. We're actually just trying to siphon that heat off and use it for power. And we're using one of the best thermal conductivity tiles in the game with an aluminum metal tile with a thermal conductivity of 205. We also have the radiant liquid pipes carrying all the hydrogen snaking through the steam room. And this way, we're actually dropping off even more heat. We finish the snake by riding it all the way up and we add a couple of more steel radiant gas pipes in this area because this is where our thermal aqua tuner is going to counter heat exchange with these gas pipes. In other words, we're going to try to drop the temperature of the gas in the pipe to its final level here to get it as low as possible before it's long ride all the way up to the power box. And to make sure that we have enough thermal mass, we're actually going to add a lot of water into here. I'm thinking five tiles wide, one ton of water per tile. We're going to shoot for about five tons of water. That way the steam doesn't spike too high when it's drawing out the heat from the hydrogen vent area. Well, I honestly didn't intend to have this much water. See, what had happened was I was filling the water bottles and then I went away and came back and there was too much water. It's a dupe's fault. But more water, more better. 
it's not really going to matter. It's just going to be more mass available for the heat to be absorbed into. So we have the thermal aqua tuner in and we actually have it lower than what we're really going to have it. We said, hey, make this crude oil at least minus 20 degrees. And the reason why we're doing that is because I want to try to heat this water up just a little bit. Uh, because it's going to take forever for this much water to really start absorbing enough heat to where it becomes steam. And the difficult thing about that is, considering these two tiles are a vacuum, and these two tiles are not, heat is only going to be absorbed through these two metal tiles. These metal tiles aren't transferring with these because it's a vacuum. Additionally, any of the heat coming off the hydrogen here isn't going to be absorbed by the steam room as long as this is a vacuum as well. We also have the steam turbine hooked up into our main power spine of the colony. So we're ready. Well, as soon as another 27 cycles goes by. I'll be back. All right, our hydrogen vent has started erupting. And you can see that the hydrogen is only 15 degrees. Now, granted, there's not a lot of it yet, but it will eventually raise the temperature. What's helping us right now is all these temperature shift plates. You can see the temperature shift plates are rising in temperature and the hydrogen is sitting around that same temperature, which is going to be great because it allows our gas pump to stay within that temperature threshold until the whole system starts working. When this Atmo sensor senses more than 500 grams right about now, it's gonna start pumping that hydrogen through our system where it's going to weave all the way through and then be sent up to our power brick all right the hydrogen vent just finished its first eruption period and the temperature shift plates are still only 37 degrees and they are falling and it's because this water is able to absorb so much heat it's going to take a while to turn this into a steam box so i originally had kept this liquid locked because you never know what's going to go wrong but it's pretty obvious this system is working this out just fine so we can get rid of this here and the last thing we'll end up doing is just adding that second layer just so we make sure that no heat transfer is possible these temperature shift plates are hovering around 40 to 45. now i still wouldn't recommend putting this much water into it it's just really unnecessary because once this whole room turns into steam it'll be able to absorb enough heat and i'd like to give you that example today so i need to fast forward a bit so it's been several eruption cycles and you can tell this is still going to take a lot longer the water in the tank is the indicator it's sitting at 49.9 degrees but you'll notice the temperature shift plates and the hydrogen in the other side are only a few degrees higher. This is maintaining a very nice thermal equilibrium. Now, it would take a lot of testing, but I'm starting to think you could even get away with not having a thermal aqua tuner and having the steam turbine self-cool itself with its own coolant. During an eruption cycle, all the temperature shift plates raise in temperature which then transfers through these metal tiles then transfers to this water and what we get in return now that the hydrogen vent is stopped erupting about two and a half degrees so i think it's gonna be another fast forward session all right i waited several cycles and we finally have the entire steam box turned into steam it's 450 kilos of steam in each tile. The great news is the whole system is working just as it's supposed to. And by the time this gets up to 125 degrees for the steam turbine to be able to siphon out some heat, it's going to stabilize very, very easily. Just to make sure everybody have seen all the elements of the build, we'll go through some of the overlays. There's our power overlay. Nothing much to our plumbing, just our coolant loop. Here's our ventilation overlay. Take note of where we have the radiant gas pipes and where we have some insulated gas pipes. Finally, the automation. Standard liquid pipe thermo sensor. I have it set on 25 degrees because this is an open air steam turbine and I don't want it to go any higher than 25 degrees and there's no reason for us to cool it lower than 25. And then we have an Atmos sensor that I just set, set on 500 grams. Now you don't necessarily have to keep it on 500 grams. You could set it a little lower, a little higher. You want to make sure you have some hydrogen in this room. That way you still have heat exchange happening in between the eruption cycles. And what's great, because of the thermo aqua tuner and the thermal counter exchange that's happening between the coolant pipes and the hydrogen, the hydrogen is actually coming out at 22 to 23 degrees. Also on this colony, I have about 30 vents and geysers, so you're going to see a lot more of the vents and geysers tutorials. They're good videos, and for people who don't know how to approach each individual vent or geyser, I think they're a great resource. I hope you enjoyed this build and my explanation. Talk to you soon.